Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be showing you the proper way to color grade vlog or log footage in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, now I'm using DaVinci Resolve 15, the beta, um, and of course I say that this is the correct way, but of course take that with a grain of salt. Um, there is no true correct way, but I just want to talk about using vlog on the GH5 and sort of I think some misconceptions that people think about it. So the first thing is you have to understand that vlog is a, of course, log profile and that it needs to be properly exposed. Um, you know, we have a lot of tendencies nowadays to underexpose shots with like Cine D or different profiles because it looks cool. With vlog, you cannot underexpose it. It'll get super noisy. Now, that being said, some people recommend overexposing. Um, I personally do don't recommend that. Um, I mean, if you're going to either under or over, I'd rather go over slightly, but really trying to keep it as best exposure as you properly can. Um, in theory, you should be using some type of maybe HDR monitoring or something. Um, I recommend using a Rec. 709 LUT or some type of custom LUT inside of the GH5 or on the monitor you're using. Um, that is the proper way that most cinematographers, uh, you know, work. Most cinematographers shoot some type of log or raw profiling. Um, obviously, I'm using raw and log, not in the raw sense of like raw video, like Airy Raw, Red Code Raw, but in the raw sense of like straight out of the camera. So most log profile is monitored with some type of Rec. 709 LUT on it. Um, so again, that's the proper way. Make sure you're getting good exposure and make sure that you are monitoring with some type of LUT on because if you try to expose without it, it is ridiculously hard. So, um, there's two ways to properly color grade log footage. A lot of people are like, oh, you need to, you know, uh, sorry, I'm going to reset this. Some people are like, oh, you need to color grade from scratch. And if you don't color grade from scratch, you are totally a noob. And that is the biggest misconception out there completely. Um, open up any American cinematographer magazine and you will see that 99% of the time, they're uh, color grading in DaVinci Resolve with a custom LUT. Now, granted, I guess you could say that the custom LUT is some type of, you know, base grade or whatever. But in all actuality, most of them are using 709 conversions. So you're converting this log super flat color space to a Rec. 709 color space and then working from there. Um, so anyway, that's how the professionals usually do it. Um, but of course, you can do it however you want. But I'm going to show you that workflow and sort of some different ways you can do it. Now, the true way that you would normally do this is you'd go into your project settings and you would go to color management and you would actually change it to, so normally it's like DaVinci YRGB, you change it to color um, and then you would actually output uh, Rec. 709. We're not going to do that right now because that's a whole big ordeal. So we're just going to do DaVinci YRGB. Um, again, that is the correct way that you're changing it, the color space in the actual uh, transformation in your project settings. But we're not going to do that because you do lose a little bit of control. Um, but that's normally how it would be done. So I'm going to show you sort of the other way, um, which again is still I would consider the proper way to do this. So what I would do is I'm going to click Alt S on this clip and I'm going to go into my LUT browser and again, I'm on 15, so you're going to have to load a LUT in if you're not. Uh, I use LUTify. I found that these are the absolute best LUTs, and I just, I don't know, I just think they work great. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but if you go to their utility LUTs and log conversion, and what you do is jump on down. Of course, I mean, if you have a different camera, you know, use whatever camera you're using. But I'm going to do the Panasonic V Gamut Panasonic vlog to rec 709 and i'm going to apply that to my current node so what this is doing is this is changing our color space from the vlog um i guess i don't know if you want to say algorithm or color science or color space to a rec 709 color space so you can see it's adding contrast saturation the things we want back in now of course you could easily go in and try to do this on your own but these LUTs are designed specifically to properly change vlog to rec 709 with still keeping the high dynamic range or I guess the extra dynamic range you're getting from vlog. So this is not the same as just adding contrast and saturation as a lot of people think it is. So again, that's why I recommend using a conversion LUT, especially ones from a reputable company like LUTify. Um, I do not recommend because I see all the time people posting, hey, I made like a conversion LUT from Rec. 7 or, you know, from log to Rec. 709. Personally, I don't recommend using that because it's kind of like, it's like a proprietary part. Um, 
you know, these people at Ludify and these obviously larger companies or Panasonic themselves have taken the time. They know the science behind these things. So when you're actually using a conversion LUT, it's converting it properly. Not someone who's just like going in and, you know, making some contrast and saturation and then selling you that LUT. So that's just a little bit of a warning. Personally, again, I recommend using a reputable company, but again, using that LUT. Now, what I'm going to do is then I like to go back to this first node and start to correct from here. So in this case, I might bring down those highlights even more. Um, granted, I could technically, I want this to feel slightly underexposed. So I might bring them down just a touch and then bring up their uh, mids on them a little bit, but then bring our like real deep darks down. Oh, that's a little much. Right about there. Uh, then I might go to my color wheels. I might add a little bit of contrast, some more. And I might even drop those highlights down a touch more. And I think it seems like it's a little bit, uh, a little bit red, not a ton, but just, just to my eye. So I'm going to go into the tint and uh, let's see, I think it's this way. Yeah. I'm going to go like negative five, like just enough to pull out a little bit of those reds. And we're going to do something a little bit after. So this, I would say, is a fairly balanced image. Um, of course, you know, that's kind of up for interpretation, but this is how I would want it to be balanced. So now what I'm gonna do is to add a grade on top, I'm gonna click Alt S, and either you can manually grade or then add a lot on top. And again, this gives us more control. I'm gonna use Lutify again, but now I'm gonna go into the color grading, the uh, not gonna go into the generic log, because of course we've already converted. Now, one of the questions I get asked is, why not use a generic log conversion LUT to immediately grade? Well, the problem is if I did that, then I have one LUT that is both adding my contrast and saturation back, more or less going to the Rec. 709 color space, as well as my grade. So I don't have the ability to manipulate them separately, which I don't like, which is why I make these separate. So this is our 709. <clears throat> this is our correction underneath the 709 in our base. And then, of course, this is where we're going to put our actual grade. So I'm going to go in. Uh, I like the teal and orange. There's a, a Ming car. This is one of my favorites. And now what I'm going to do, this looks way too blue. <laughs> so I'm going to go in and I'm going to, on this, uh, push it uh, much warmer. I want this to be a lot warmer. I kind of like it to be a heavy warm grade. Uh, that's a little much. Probably somewhere in like that range where their skin tones are that really nice kind of orange brown sort of sort of thing going on so I really like that but the one thing that I don't like is how the sky has a very very like yellow hue to it when in reality there was sort of like pink and blues and purples kind of going on so now what normally people would do is they would add another node on top of this and then they would go in and go from there I don't want to do that so I'm gonna go back to this first node and click alt s alt l and that adds a layer node so again uh, this, this guy right here, number two, this is our rec 709. Number three is our grade. And then of course our first LUT is our little bit of adjustment and our main, you know, base. And then this layer node, what we're going to do is we're going to qualify this sky. So we're going to click on the qualifier here. We're going to select it, click shift H and we want to make sure we get a fairly clean, uh, key, which this is not. And then we want to try to get rid of them as much as possible. Uh, that looks pretty good. And then what we're going to do is then I'm going to come in here to our window and I'm going to draw a shape around this. Actually, I'm going to move down to 25%. I'm just going to draw a really, I mean, I don't want to say really rough because you want it to be fairly close, but I mean, I don't, you know, it's not like rotoscoping. So I'm going to draw this around just so there's no like spill on them because you can see there's a little bit in their arm and the last thing we want to do is have this like weird ugly look on them that'll look really ugly and then we're going to bring the softness on the inside and outside up a little bit um, so that just kind of softens it okay shift H that brings back what we're looking at and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to drag this towards a little bit of a pink maybe bring the mids a little more of a blue um and let's click off on this now boom 
you can see uh, if I turn this on and off, we go from that kind of nasty yellow sky, losing that really nice purpley, you know, blue detail, which was actually in the shot. And that's one thing I want to stress. I mean, you could, yes, fake this, but this was really there. It's actually in the background. Um, and again, we're sort of emphasizing it. So now, again, we have this really nice teal and orange on their skin and on the, you know, trees and the flowers. But then we still have this nice pinkish blue sky um, as if the sun was setting. And, of course, uh, the cool thing is we could just select another clip that is very similar, apply the grade, and it basically did the same thing. Now, obviously, this is different. So what I would do, make a new window, deselect that window, and like in this case, oops, we just want to drag it on up to the sky. This one's fairly easy because, obviously, it's just, you know, them walking. And boom, you're done. And now that has a similar look. Now, of course, we could adjust it slightly, but I mean, those look pretty much, I mean, these were shot within literally basically, you know, a couple seconds, maybe a minute or two of each other. Uh, so that looks cool. So anyway, that's kind of a really cool, uh, quick look at grading V-Log. Again, the big thing I want to get across here is separating out your nodes and separating out using your log uh, conversion LUT to 709. Again, that is something I can't stress enough. I truly, you know, again, open up any American Cinematographer magazine and you can see that is the number one way that they color grade. And again, it's just the best way to go about it. So it's the way that I recommend. And of course, it keeps things separated enough where you can easily turn off your grade and you could turn off your Rec. 709 and all that kind of stuff. And then you can start to break things down or change things as you need. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing some more vlog testing in the future. So definitely if you have any questions specifically on certain things in vlog, like maybe how it compares to Cine D or stuff like that, let me know. And I'd love to give them a test. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys later.